Yo. If you come in here, you're it'll be a lot deeper if you go to the other side. I had set out a three-step step ladder with the boat, thinking it would be taken as a way to, to get on it, to get on the boat. And the committee took the boat without my knowing what they were taking, and they left the step ladder here. But if I had been paying attention, I would have realized they didn't take it. Thank you. I was surprised because I had tried out for the boat crew, but I didn't make the strength training. So um, I didn't think I'd row, but they needed me at the end. So they said, Joe, can you row? And I said, I can paddle, yeah, fine. Might as well. Now we need flow. Yeah, flow. Flow's over here. Just take your time and we'll go in. Come on, Douglas. Wait, Douglas. Come on, Douglas. Now I had only been on the boat itself when it was on land and on a step stool. And there it was, and I had to somehow or another get up on the stern of the boat and inch my way forward on my butt to where I was going to paddle. And uh, so uh, I, I just think we should have practiced ahead of time and talked about what might happen and be a little more uh, aware of the possibilities of an accident. <laughs> And uh, and I think I may have, in scooching along like this, sort of displaced the device that Al was going to use like this to make these things go like that, to give us forward motion. But that's what may have happened. Yo, Al? Oh, that's seat belts. Yeah, you know, Any seat belts there? Look at me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't think it was seat belts. Oh, no. Next year. Next year, next year, next year is seat belts. I got it. <laughs> the getting on the boat process was not well planned. And so the person that had got on on the, <clears throat> the starboard aft corner headed for the port forward bow, went across the device, kicked it loose, and so it was done in the very first seconds of getting on the boat. So we had no propulsion device. It was strictly rowing from then on. Yes, ma'am. Oh. Are you going all the way down? I can't. Okay. Cool. I got gotcha. you. Well done. Bye. Bye. Have a good trip. Bon voyage. Bon voyage. Bon voyage. Bon voyage. You're sinking. Everybody move up. Flow. Watch flow. Watch flow. I thought it would be higher in the water. Hold on. Center wheel. 
Uh oh, watch Flo. Flo's gonna. No, Flo's going Someone's gotta go anchor left. Finally, go away and paddling and paddling. And he says, Paddle harder, Doug. Doug is harder. They got out into the deeper water and the cold water. Doug starts getting a leg cramp and it's extremely painful. Are they trying to get away from the shore so they can then pull back? Okay. Oh my god. I was worried when there was listening to one side there. Making Oh, she's slow! Somebody. Oh, here, here, I'll go Can you help? Get on the water, swim in as far as I could. But uh I didn't realize, I didn't, uh, I didn't wear any life jackets. Uh, I suffered foot cramps and uh, I, I cannot swim now. So I yelled to uh, need help and suddenly, wow. back here. So I moved back and I uh, somehow or another fell backwards onto Joe Ferguson's lake. When he's lying on on Joe, and I'm trying to get him off, and I asked Will, who was in the right front and starboard port, grab him by the hand, and then I essentially did a leg push on his back and pushed, got him off, then got legs, Joe's leg out from under. Meanwhile, Flo is on my right, and she's up to her waist in water. And the terrifying thing to me was to see Henry lying flat on that paddleboard. Don't move, don't move! Yeah. Hey, we need somebody to move out in the boat, you guys? What are these guys doing? Have you got a phone? Have you got a person? Hello? There's a picture of me with this idiotic grin on my face because it was funny once it was evident that nobody was going to drown and uh, it was it was really really funny but there for a little while it wasn't funny yeah. it really it's wasn't i have a critical condition also i have asthma 
can not beep now. And uh, I yelled to the girl, said, can you get my jacket? There's inhaler there, pass me the inhaler. I walked away and then I took off the jacket and went up and sat in a chair way far away in utter humiliation and just felt I wanted to die a little bit. <laughs> there were safety people there to make sure that nobody drowned. They saw us struggling, but they, they figured we had it under control. I never figured we had it under control. No, it's good. Our heroes. It, it tipped towards the side that I was on, and I got soaking wet immediately and had to be lifted off of the boat. And uh, so... Um, but somebody else, I can't remember who at this point, it's blank. Somebody else took my place on the boat. It was kind of so crazy and chaotic. And I heard more than one person say, you know, we didn't come this far to not finish. Who do we need? You better get off. Michael, go get my bag and stuff that's down that way. It's a little beach. And I got first aid in it. So your granddaughter, your grandson, and Zach. We're so glad everybody came back. We're just two of us. We're just two of us. Who? You two. Bob's going. He was determined to make sure the boat went back out on the water again. Um, and there was nothing, like we were physically trying to hold him back because he wanted to get on that boat. Well, can I have your jacket? Oh, I'm going to wear it. Oh, he's going to go. Are you going to go? You want to go? Why not? You going oh, back yeah, in? Going. Well, okay. Well, was that stupid? <laughs> uh, you know, I guess we're going to close it. <laughs> well, we're going we're back in. And I'm standing there in the water, and nobody's moving to, to do it. And so I just said, well, I can do it. I qualify. I'm old enough. <laughs> so with no practice, I, I got to get on the boat and yeah. Jennifer, don't yeah. get too far yes. forward. Get back away. Do you need a life jacket? Well, Who's take got a life jacket? Jennifer, don't get a life Jennifer, Jennifer, go to back. Joe's got a life jacket. Move back about halfway to the boat. Can I go out there? No, you're not expendable. Are you going to go out there? Oh, yeah, right. As soon as we repair the, repair the injured, we're in. She's not expendable, but I am. Well, I am, too. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Now you know what you're saying. Yeah, really. There's only three things you have to do. You keep the slimy side down, you don't hit anything hard, and you stay in the boat. Stay in the boat. we did all three, right? <laughs> nobody fell off, nobody hit anything, and we didn't turn over. Well, that's true. Piece of, piece of cake. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I get it back? I you new you should switch. Yeah. We're going to an overbalance on the on this side. On this on the starboard side. <laughs> all right. Let the bird do all the work, folks. I don't know who else no, gonna, I want to see if it floats first. Yeah. Okay. Give me my cane, man. I don't have your cane. Jennifer, move toward the center yeah, post. Mary, smile. No, no, no. That's the wrong way. That's the wrong way. This looks better. Don't move around. There they go. That's what Paddle, paddle, wobble, whoops. We're in the lake at last. Float and finish fashionably. We don't insist on fast. We all fought. My 
family and I, anyway, thought that everybody was going to be getting off the boat and perhaps the whole thing was going to be scratched. But um, it turned out that just the man who had a cramp in his leg and I were the ones that were taken off the boat. So, unfortunately, I'd, I didn't get to ride on the boat when it got to the race. And uh, I was disappointed because I had qualified. I was the first woman to qualify. And I was very happy and excited in the morning about being in the race. So I was a bit disappointed that I didn't get to finish. Um, I had sort of like a live play-by-play -play of what was happening yeah. um, via text message from Nancy Weinbeck, our Director of Resident Services. So she was letting me know everything, what was going on. I was, I was, I was here, I didn't get to go. But we heard it, people would call us and so. Well, I was so nervous because I really wanted them to win. And that's how everybody was here. And starting line right there. We could have we could have really made a name for old people thinking through things <laughs> and and coming out. But we wound up oh, I hate to use the word but a little bit pathetic. You had the, the clown said, oh you poor folks kind of thing. And I didn't that was what I wanted to avoid entirely. <laughs> You know, so, so I really have to, all the disaster, I have to take most of the blame, really, because it just, it just didn't get them set up. That was not their role. Their role was keeping up the excitement and having fun. And well, he, he built a proper boat. There was no question the boat would float. Everybody was saying, well, we're going to take it out and test it and it's going to sink. I said, no, it's not going to sink because we have... 229 cartons and each one supports four pounds. That's 800 pounds. The clown shit up in the line! <laughs> On your marks! Get set! Go! Now understand we had never practiced before. And we're, we're rowing for the first time. My hobby's sailing, I like to race sailboats, and you, you try to hit the starting line full speed ahead at the gun, which we did, and for one magic moment we were ahead, and then it was just sheer drudgery. It was truly inspiring. This group of folks who average age 88, oldest paddler 97, who built their own boat out of milk cartons and had no fear. I was overcome with emotion and, and I think everyone around me was too. And in fact, I made new friends that day because there were people who had never heard of Bayview and were so enthralled and captivated by what our residents were doing. They were, they were cheering us on. You would have thought they had family members at Bayview or that they were somehow connected to Bayview, but they, they were just so moved. Oh my, come on, guys! Come on, Bayview! When the going got tough, they refused to give up. Refused. And we were really worried about people with health conditions, and my 15-year-old daughter was with me, and for her to see that courage and that spirit and that we're not going to fail, we are going to do this. Uh, I, I can think of a greater life lesson. Good for baby retirement home.
That's the, the old folks right there. That's the retirement. Oh, look at the clowns. I think there were a lot of people who thought, residents too, this isn't going to happen. So let's go along. Let's go along with it. I really do. I think that it was suddenly, you know, for a long time I thought, oh, well, this isn't, this isn't really, you didn't know that. You may have known it, but you no. didn't. But, you know, there's so many aspects, there's so many hurdles that unless there's some real determination, it's not, it's just going to fall apart, like so many things do. <laughs> In the nonprofit category, we've got the American Boeing Club, of course. Big U Motors, Be Fair Clown. Go, Big U! Go, Big U! My family, including my daughter and a granddaughter and a granddaughter's husband, and were all there and they didn't want anything to happen to grandma. <laughs> and so um, they were really relieved that I was taken off the boat, I think. But I was walked along the shore and followed the boat and saw them get to the finish. You, you said that later on, that uh, deep down inside the administration never thought we'd do it. They just kind of humorous. I really don't think they did until the very end. Yeah. <laughs> and I think a lot of folks didn't think we'd do it either. <clears throat> but I think everyone who, well, actually, all of our children and grandchildren were not quite sure when it looked like it really, really was going to happen. So Flo's children weren't the only ones who were concerned with their parents and grandparents who were on this boat. You know, my family wanted to help take care of me and they didn't say in so many words that they really thought that I should give up driving and do all these things. There was these sort of hints and I, I remember saying, you know, I'll tell you when I want help. And so I think that this takeaway is that that's fine. I'll ask for help when I feel I'm old enough to need help. But until I'm old enough to need help, I'm going to make the decision for myself. And I just think that this helped sort of solidify that, that it doesn't really matter how old you are. It's what, what you want to do and what you can do. Row, row, row our boat, quaintly cross Green Lake. <coughs> merrily, 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 we score for heaven's sake. It was kind of the experience like that of seeing my kids out there. Um, I was so proud. It was like a Hollywood moment where y you think it's going to end in in tragedy, and it and it ends in triumph. And it didn't matter that the that they didn't win that heat. Um, the the triumph was was in the doing, and the fact that they. Did it? They made it. They floated. They. I bombed with you. Oh, you did. Right oh. when we were driving the boat, as we landed. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't you know it? Do you feel better now? I feel wonderful. <laughs> it was the most, most fun I've had for a long, long time. It was just great, in spite of the terrible wound which still has not healed and in spite of being exhausted and everything it was wonderful Brave you! Brave you! Brave you! Brave you! because i've been sitting during this whole operation i could barely stand but i finally got up on two feet 
then staggered off the dock. And I don't know how they got that boat out of the water. I have no idea. Eventually came on back to Bayview and took a shower because I needed it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think just the enthusiasm, the the energy that that they possessed was was really awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We finally make it across the finish line, and, and I'm a little embarrassed because we're so far behind. And uh, there's this people from Baby yelling Baby, Baby, and and then. Nancy comes up and says it was inspirational, and then Jan comes up, and I thought, huh? And, and then I realized that the perception was that we reconstituted the crew, or like the phoenix rising from the ashes, and did something great. And then for me, it was just, you know, <laughs> at least we finished. Well, and then, see, in, in a way, I find, I find that amazing. I find that amazing that people are looking at that and saying, oh, that's so inspirational. You know, really, why should it be inspirational? Just because you have so many years added to your life that suddenly it's inspirational that you're able to do something. And so I don't see it like that it's a marvelous, wonderful, different thing. I think it just depends on what you want to do and what you can do, and you should just do it. We'll walk hand in hand. These fractious times are fractious here in our little retirement community, but in an event like this, it broke through everybody's politics, everybody's faith, every, anything that might keep people apart, it just broke right through that and brought everybody together. And I know our folks are working on designs for next year's entry. And I suspect there are a few retirement communities now that are going to be giving us some competition. Now you try it! In fact, I already have a new design. It would be a, a much more stable configuration. There would be only one way to get on, and it would be directly to your seat you would have to cross open water to get from one position to another. <laughs> and if you're old enough, it doesn't really matter, you know, what people think. And I think that, that is why it was fun. It yeah. didn't matter, you know. It didn't matter if they think we were crazy. Yeah. It did not matter. That's, that's one of the liberating things about getting older, is, <laughs> is you, know, you don't have to worry about yeah. stuff like that. <laughs> so anyway, first week in December, I had an attack of vertigo. And I got really dizzy. The, the, the room was spinning around, and Mary came in, and my blood pressure, my, my, heart, my, my heart rate was way down. So she called a nurse, and my blood pressure was way up, my heart rate was way down. So I called my primary care, and they said, go to the emergency room. So Mar, uh, Mary took me, and I'm lying there in the emergency room, and they did an MRI, and they did a CAT scan, and I'm thinking of all the things that could be that I had no control over, it could be a life-changing event, and I thought of what Tennessee Williams once wrote, life is a three-act play and the third act is poorly written. And I thought, well, maybe I could rewrite the third act a little bit, of, and, uh, and I looked at Mary, and a song went through my head, and it was, Mary B, Mary B, will you marry me? 
Mary B, Mary B, will you marry me? Even little children love Mary B, so do I, will you marry me? I, all of a sudden I realized, you know, that there's, there's more to life, and, and she was a big part of mine, and I just really enjoyed being with her. Oh, yeah.